Thanks for watching and congratulations for making it this far. Welcome to our final way of evaluating the Gaussian integral. And this is what I like to call the Ramajnujan way because it came from the math, it, it uses a formula from Ramanujan. And this one, I didn't find it on Keith Conrad's notes, but there was another blog, Philosophical Math, which is also fantastic. You have to check it out. And it's based on the following formula, which I won't prove, because I don't know how to prove it, but it's a very neat fact. Namely, suppose you can write F as some power series. So, and not quite a power series of x, but a power series of minus x. Suppose there's some phi such that f of x equals to phi n over n factorial, but minus x to the n. So if there were not this minus, it would be a Maclaurin series. But this is almost a Maclaurin series, but with minus 1 to the n. Then it turns out that the following integral e simplifies. And this is, I think, called the Mellon transform or something. That's why there's an M. Then it turns out the integral from 0 to infinity of x, s minus 1, f of x dx, is actually equal to the following gamma of s times phi of minus s. Weird. Turns out this integral equals to the gamma function times the coefficient, but instead of integers, you put s, minus s. Uh, sort of like the Riemann zeta function, if you'd like. Okay, let's use this fact to calculate our Gaussian integral. And this is kind of neat. Take the integral from 0 to infinity of e of minus x squared dx. Or Gaussian integral, and let's sort of transform it into form x to the s minus 1. Then, let's use the following u substitution, which I'm sure a lot of you have tried when you try to evaluate that integral. u equals to x squared, du equals to 2x dx, and therefore dx is 1 over 2x du, that becomes 1 over 2 square root of u du. Then that integral just becomes integral from 0 to infinity e of minus u over 2 square root of u du. Which, if you'd like, just becomes 1 half times the integral from 0 to infinity e of, so u of minus 1 half e of minus u du, and instead of u, let's just write x, one half integral from zero to infinity, x to the minus one half, e of minus x dx. And notice, this is precisely of the form x to the s minus one f of x, with s being one half, and f being e of minus x. So notice s is 1 half, and f of x equals to e of minus x. And now let's just use a power series of e to the minus x. And I realize I still have the sweater, so let me put the power series sweater on. It's like the power ranges of math. So man, if only I can find the power series of e to the minus x. Well, ta-da, it's somewhere on there. So we know that e to the x is equal to the sum of sum from 0 to infinity, something to the n over n factorial. Well, e to the minus x then just becomes sum of minus x to the n over n factorial. In particular, if you compare it to this formula, this just means that phi of n equals to 1. So phi of n equals to 1, identically 1. In particular, phi of s is also 1. And then what we get is the integral from 0 to infinity uh, of 
x to the minus 1 half e of minus x, x dx is then just equal to gamma of s, so gamma of 1 half, and phi of, uh, sorry, phi of minus s, but phi is, so I guess phi of minus 1 half, but phi is just identically equal to 1, so it's just gamma of 1 half. Lastly, what is gamma of one half? Turns out this is nice identity. That's called Euler's formula as well, and which I have done a video on, which just says that gamma of one minus z times gamma of z equals to pi over sine of pi z. Well, in particular, let z be one half, and then you get gamma of one half, times gamma of 1 half equals to pi times sine of pi over 2. But sine of pi over 2, that's just 1. So we get gamma of 1 half squared equals to pi. So gamma of 1 half, it's square root of pi. So this integral is square root of pi. In particular, the integral from 0 to infinity of e of minus x squared dx is 1 half of that, so square root of pi over 2, and therefore this Gaussian integral is just square root of pi over 2, and if you'd like the full Gaussian integral of e of minus x squared dx is indeed equal to square root of pi. And this, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our 12-part series on the Gaussian integral. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I, it's, I thought it was very beautiful. It kind of illustrates how, how many facets of math there are. So, if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.